Hey everybody, welcome to another Epic Fuzz video. Ed is here, how's everyone doing today? I uh, just so wanted to do a quick video today and just to let you know where Epic Fuzz is going. So Epic Fuzz is my music tech, gear tech channel review channel. And I, 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 I um, reviewed a lot of music gear and techniques and everything. I'm still gonna do that. Epic Fuzz is still gonna be doing that. But I wanted to expand it a little bit to do videos like this where we talk about different things in tech in general. <clears throat> so I will be doing videos on, I have the MPC Live 3 coming up, video on that. Um, but I wanted to talk about also uh, other tech advances that really catch my eye. So I'll make this brief, but one of the things you probably heard of is uh, Kyra. Kyra is a new camera, a micro four thirds camera by Camera Intelligence. And essentially it's a snap on to your phone, iPhone only right now where it snaps onto your iPhone. I might put some uh, video of it here, but it snaps onto your iPhone. It allows you to speak to it as a Micro Four Thirds uh, sensor, so you can in interchange different Micro Four Thirds lenses, which is pretty cool, because that has always been a uh, sensor size that hasn't gotten a lot of love. But it does, uh, takes pictures, and it'll save a ride to your phone because it's connected through MagSafe which is awesome to me. I mean, that's the one thing that I've always wanted was a phone that automatically downloaded to my, was a phone, was a camera that automatically downloaded pictures to my phone, but had a better quality than my phone did. So this, uh, a Micro Four Thirds is probably four or five times better the quality than iPhones, you know, the iPhone phones, 17. Um, so that was good. And you can also interchange the lenses. You can probably put filters on there. Um, so that's really good. Now, another thing, it has voice control. So you can actually use it and tell it to do things like, oh, um, can you adjust this? Can you adjust the contrast in this picture? Take the shot and it'll take the shot. So voice control is something that a lot of people may use, may not use, but it's pretty cool to have it in camera. Uh, probably the biggest thing that Kyra's pushing is the AI. Now, this is a touchy subject uh, because I know how people feel about AI. If you guys know, I have a channel called AI Fuzz. If you want to check that out, it's all about AI. But integrating it here with the camera. Now you're probably wondering how, well they took uh, Google's wondrous model, Nano Banana, which is an image editing model, and they incorporated it with this camera. So you can actually take a picture, type in a command, um, if you're not sure what Nano Banana is, Nano Banana is basically a generative AI model that you can edit pictures. So if you have a picture of a dog, you can put it through Nano Banana and you can say, hey, put a hat on the dog and it'll put a hat on the dog on your computer. So now you're able to do it in camera when you're shooting. So you can shoot a picture, take a picture and say it's a lady with a hat and you want to change her hat to the color red. You would type it up to Nano Banana. It'll send it to the cloud generate it and send it back to you and you can change anything you want about the picture you can remove people again the the possibility possibilities are endless with nano because you can do add text you can change angles if you want camera angles you can remove people you can do whatever you want um so that's really exciting this is going to be the first camera of its kind to actually have gender a generative ai model built in so it's very exciting now the flip side to it, and I always have to do the flip side because this is forever fuzz and I want to make sure I at least give you both sides of the story because there's always both sides. Is it truly photography anymore if you're doing all this type of editing in your camera? So if I take a picture of like a tree that I really like, but I end up editing it and, and, and having nano, because again, generative AI is generating stuff to your picture, new stuff. It's not you know, using old stuff, it's generating new stuff. So it technically doesn't become your picture anymore. Uh, so is that truly photography? I don't think it is. And I think that getting away from this and getting more towards AI might not be that great of a thing because we're losing the, I think the art of photography. We're losing the passion and everything, you know, we want to take a picture. Also, uh, all your stuff is getting sent to the cloud, you know, and, and, and there are safeties, re, you know, they, Google says it's safe, but there's also safety reasons, 
since it's sent to the cloud and back down, one is your images used to train their other models on is it really safe privacy wise yeah there are always those concerns when you when you think of ai and that's why it's so scary um another reason and again i'm thinking about how what people are scared about one is they don't know who this camera is for now i can tell you right away this camera the 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 ceo of camera intelligence who made this camera he's not a photographer he didn't know anything about photography when he started built, making this camera. So that kind of shocked me and it kind of like, okay, I don't know about this, you know? And he learned more about photography as he was building it, which is fine, but he didn't know the difference between like a full sensor, an APS-C sensor or stuff like that. And like, I think you would need to know those basic things to even try to build something that's aimed at that demographic of people i think and that's kind of like okay i don't know i mean this camera will be aimed at people that want to do social media photos maybe maybe the younger crowd or maybe the the cam the people who aren't into photography that may um just want to take pictures and do some generative ai stuff um we have the camera on order so we're going to be getting ours soon and i will do a full review on it the good and the bad uh, and, and see what you think. But I think it's a niche camera aimed at those people. Technology wise, it's innovative. Technology wise, it's the very first of its kind. Their first camera, the Alice camera was so, so um, they had history of, of, of not sending it to people, which I know a lot of people who didn't even get the Alice camera but pay for it. So their track record isn't all that great, but the Kyra seems to be, it's on a Kickstarter now. So if you want to um, support it, just go to the Kickstarter and hopefully they'll be shipping soon. But there's two sides to this. I mean, it's good and it's bad. I can see both sides to this. I can see the good and the bad. I don't know what else, if you guys want to post and comment, let me know what you guys think. Uh, just be polite in the comments. Let me know what your concerns are or are you excited for this camera? Uh, and, and I will have a full, full review on it. And also looking for the best Micro Four Thirds cam uh, lens to put on this because it is uh, interchangeable. So that's a good thing. So make sure you guys like and subscribe to Epic Fuzz. I will be doing a video on the FPC Life 3 because that's out. Uh, and some other things there. So I'll see you guys later.